Kiyama Sanda Baba Babo Sheke Rabaye. Come blow in this house, God. River of God flow through this place tonight. Let the river flow tonight, Jesus. Flow, mighty God. Manda Siya Be Kura Bashanda Baha. Come on, lift your voices. Don't be tired on me tonight. Set the atmosphere. This is what we do. It's not a show. You've got to set the atmosphere. Stir your spirit. Where's my watchman? Where's my intercessor? Stir yourself in the Holy Ghost right now. Shanda mate ke rabo bobo sanda ba. Shanda ba 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 sanda bebe kura ba ye. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, we welcome you in this room right now, Jesus. Fill this room with the cloud of your presence. Revival, Jesus. Revival, Jesus. Revival, Jesus. We prophesy to the nation. Revival. The UK is open. We prophesy. Revival. Revival. To every home, revival. To every life, revival. Have your way, Jesus. You are in control. We yield to the Spirit tonight again. And we say, have your way in this house. In Jesus' name. Lord, have your way here, Lord. Have your way here, God. You are welcome in this place. Spirit of the Lord, come rushing in tonight. Come on, church, just begin to pray in the Spirit. Lift your voice. Look to Jesus tonight. He's the reason that we're gathered. Jesus, you're the one that we've come for tonight. Just begin to pray. Pray, pray. Sing there is a sound. 
there's a sound that changes things. It's the sound of his people along their knees. Oh, when he caught through some rain, it's time to worship him. Awake my soul and sing. Sing his praise aloud. Sing his praise aloud.
Come 
Thompson, that in your name the demons they flee. In your name, oh, the oppressed they go free. And in your name, all oh, those mountains, those mountains crumble down. In your name, you wear the victor's crown. Tonight, Lord, that you are here. You are here. You are here, Lord, to bind up the brokenhearted, to calm the storms, to calm the raging seas. I see the Lord splitting the seas tonight. I see the Lord doing the impossible tonight. Let the realm of faith open up in this atmosphere, Lord, and open heaven here. Come on, whatever it is you're contending for tonight, present it to God tonight. Is he not the God that moves mountains? Is he not the God that heals the sick? Is he not the God that raises the dead? Is he not the God that can split the seas? Is he not that God that still rescues? Is he not the God that can save? Is he not the God of the impossible? tonight church don't look at us look at Jesus tonight
boldly. Sing it boldly. Just the voices. children of God, Yeshua. Come on, sing it from your belly.
Come on, continue to sing. We're stepping into the realms of glory. Come on, we're stepping into the realms of glory. His glory is descending in this place right now. Yes, just continue to sing. Continue to sing from your spirit. People are already being touched by the glory of God. Some are even being delivered by the finger of God right now. Some are being healed in their bodies right now. Yeshua is here. There it is. Come on, he's touching you right now. He's touching you right now. It's impossible to cry his name and him not respond. He's touching you right now. Continue to worship. Demonic powers are being weakened right now. The more that you surrender, the more that you yield, yield to the Holy Spirit. Come on, sing it as you yield. Come on, surrender, surrender, surrender. As you're singing, there's somebody getting ready to break through. There's somebody on the verge of a breakthrough as we sing right now. There's somebody getting ready to step on the other side. There's somebody getting ready to break through in the spiritual realm. Shoo! Hey! Bre shendri ayanomondrie. Stepping into realms of his glory. This is all about Yeshua, Hamashiach, him and him alone. Come on, you're birthing a breakthrough. You're birthing a breakthrough. Don't stop pushing. Don't stop pushing. You're birthing a breakthrough right now. You're birthing a breakthrough. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, fire is falling as you're singing. Fire is falling. Fire is descending upon this place as you're singing. Those that worship him will worship in spirit and in truth. Shoo. 
flesh is dying in this place. Carnal desires are dying in this place. Soulish realm is diminishing. There are angels in this atmosphere fighting and warring on our behalf right now with chains, hooks, and fetters of iron. <laughs> incense is rising, incense is rising, incense is rising.
worship you, Jesus. We praise you, Father. 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 We magnify you, Father. We exalt you, Father. We lift you up, Father. We praise you, Father. We Somebody needs to begin to worship him with your own words right now. Come on, tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how thankful you are for him. The king is in the room right now. Tell them, tell him, tell him. Oh, this is true worship unadulterated worship come on tell him come on tell him tell him tell him tell him tell him some of you have never been into deep realms of his glory but you are in the Shekinah glory right now you are in the Shekinah glory right now where not even a minister could stand to minister. Oh, if you would just touch the hem of his garment. Oh, if you would just begin to make a withdrawal from his virtue. Oh, if you would just reach out and make a transaction right now. Come on, according to your faith, you will be made whole. Somebody is putting a demand on God right now. Somebody. If you don't heal me, Lord, I will worship you. If you don't bless me, I want to know you, God. Like Moses, teach me your ways, God. Show me your face. I want your glory, Lord. It's not pretty. Oh, this is not for religious folks. This is not for religious folks. I'm trying to teach the United Kingdom how to birth a groan and a travailing and a desperation. Revival carries a cost. The oil costs you a groan and a travail. Some of you have only prayed five minutes your whole life, but sometimes you got to grab a hold of the altar and you've got to say, I'm not letting go until you change me, God. I'm not letting go until you touch me, God. I'm here to touch the very throne of heaven. <laughs> birth is messy birth is bloody somebody's birthing the next level but you're gonna have to push oh i know it's hot in here but i'd rather have the heat and the glory than sit in air conditioning without the presence of jehovah I come to serve notice on every demon under the sound of my voice. Tonight you will be vanquished to the abyss. We come to execute judgment on territorial spirits over London and the United Kingdom. And I come with the authority of my Father in heaven and I say enough, enough. Sickness and disease will be healed. Demons will be gone tonight. The king is in the room, and no demon can stand in the presence of Jehovah. I say revival. Awaken. Awaken your bride, God. Awaken your bride, God. 
Awaken your bride. Awaken the slumbering bride. Somebody is getting a burden for intercession right now. There's intercessors rising up that will contend in the heavenly realms. Whew. There's a burden. Somebody's coming back to their first love right now. Somebody's coming back to their first love right now. Somebody's coming back to their first love right now. Pour it out. Holy Spirit, pour it out. Holy Spirit, pour it out. Those that are closest to me are already getting deliverance. The glory is doing the work. Look at the front row. They're already receiving deliverance in the front row. They're already being touched. The anointing is, it's just moving from the front to the back right now. The anointing is moving right now. Some of you are going to begin to scream demons out because the devil's intimidated by the atmosphere of the glory. Oh. <laughs> This sound, oh, I love this sound. I love this sound. This is the sound of the, the warrior's awakening. This is the sound. I hear swords clinging in the spirit. I hear chains breaking in the spirit. I hear some shields being oiled up for battle. He's re-oiling and re-firing an army up in this place. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> oh, I love this sound. This is a sound of travail. This is a sound of desperation. Oh, you can go back to St. Anthony's next week. You can go pray to saints who are really demons. But I'm crying out to Yeshua. I don't want the religion and tradition of man. I want the throne of heaven to descend here in London tonight. There's a Holy Ghost boldness coming over here. I hear the sound of worshipers rising up. I hear the sound of true worshipers rising up. There's a Holy Ghost boldness coming on. Oh, from the inside. From the inside. Shut up, shame. Shut up, guilt. Shut up, condemnation. Shut up, every demon trying to silence our praise. I don't care if there aren't Christians in London. There's going to be a lot more after tonight. Devil, you can't stop what you didn't start. There's a boldness being released right now. Boldness. Boldness. Oh. Yeah, come on. This is pandemonium, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. This sounds like revival to me. If you don't know what to do right now, just start thinking them. If you don't know what to do right now, start praising them. If you don't know what to do right now, stop speaking English and start speaking in tongues. If you don't know what to do right now, then you're getting moved into your higher level. Level. I'm stirring you up. The apostle Paul said, fan into a flame. Let's fan that thing tonight. Let's fan that thing tonight. Let's fan that thing tonight. If the Muslims can radicalize, we can radicalize. Jesus was not just a prophet, he is Messiah. We're not going to let them radicalize. If the New Age can radicalize, we can radicalize. If the witches and warlocks can stay up all night doing incantations and spells, then I'll pray all night too. It's the prophets of Baal versus Elijah. Let's see whose God brings down fire. Let's see whose God brings down fire. Yeah. 
God will not be mocked. God will not be outdone. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against him. It is not over for this nation. England will be saved. It starts with you. It starts with you. It starts with you. I'm speaking to the overflow. The anointing can be stronger in the overflow. Acts chapter 19, they were able to put anointing on handkerchiefs. How much more a sound system. I wish that overflow would be so loud that the police would come through the front door to see what's going on. We've got to disrupt this neighborhood. I'm here to disrupt some demonic activity. They're stabbing with knives, but I'm stabbing with the sword of the spirit up in here. They've got their weapons, but my weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. I'm ready. I'm ready. Is there somebody ready? You're being infused with Holy Spirit power right now. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, After the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power to be my witnesses. We don't need 10,000. Give me 500 on fire. Give me Gideon's army. Give me the remnant. Give me those who won't compromise. Give me those who won't bend a knee to Babylon. We don't need a lot. Is there a Daniel? Is there a Shadrach? Is there a Meshach? Is there somebody who says I won't bow we won't bow we won't bow you're being infused with Holy Spirit power right now that's what you feel in this atmosphere You're feeling Holy Spirit power now. Who cares what your family thinks? The Bible says the gospel will be a sword that divides family. There's no longer Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male nor female. Look around. This is your family now. Some of your family's not going to understand why you walk the narrow path. They're going to say you're doing too much. The same family members who spend all their money for psychic mediums, the same family members who spend all their money to drink alcohol will be mad at you taking an Uber to come to a revival. And I say, I rebuke you. I got another family. My family are the the ones who do the will of my father I might have to forsake that family to walk in this family but I can tell you you're normal around here you're normal around here those same family members that say you're too loud why do you got to worship like that are watching football isn't there a final going on right now literally watching football they said they'll make it a national bank holiday if they win and the same people that yell at the television will get mad at you for putting on a worship song and yelling at the devil but i say i'm gonna keep on yelling i'm gonna keep on prophesying i'm gonna you won't shut me up devil This is warfare. This is warfare. You want to know why we got lines around the block for two services today? It wasn't to see Mike Signorelli. I'll tell you that much. But if Christ be lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. I'm here for Jesus. Yeshua. There's there's a line around the block because people are sensing that it's a shift People are sensing it's time. People are done with narcissistic, abusive pastors. I said people are done with pastors programmed by Ahab and Jezebel. People are done with pastors putting a lid on the Holy Ghost. People are done with pastors that politic. And they're saying... The real, I'm preaching right now. We're about to get delivered here in a few. 
The line around the block for, for these services were because people said, I'm sick and tired. And I know that there is a true body of Christ. I know that there's a true church. I know that there's a true impartation. I know that there's the real thing. And what you're feeling in the atmosphere of this place is people coming together and saying that that toxic narcissistic leader wasn't enough to stop me from going before the throne of the king. What you're feeling in this atmosphere is somebody that says it may not have happened when I wanted it to happen. It may look like it delayed, but I have not been denied. And I know that God will do what he said he will do if God said it I believe it that settles it I feel the fire of God yeah there's visions that many of you gotten years ago and you said how could this possibly come to pass how could this come to pass with the culture you know they tell me you can't minister in the United Kingdom. You don't know our culture. And you know what I tell them? I'm not interested in learning English culture. I'm here to download heaven's culture. All I know is it's the same devil, but it's the same Yeshua. Therefore, it's the same victory. I don't, come on, somebody. We're whooping devils in New York City, and we're going to whoop devils here in London. It's the same Yeshua. It's the same anointing. It's the same healer. It's the same. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today, and he's the same forever. Hey. Yeah. 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 Oh, Pastor Mike, that's just emotionalism. That's just emotionalism. <laughs> Can't we just read the scriptures? The holy scriptures, Stephen? Can't we just read the scriptures in silence? The Bible says, if I don't scream, the rocks will scream. If I don't cry out, the rocks will cry out. If this is too loud for you, you're going to hate heaven because it's going to be loud around the throne of God. It's going to be real loud. I once was lost, now I'm found. I once was blind, now I see. Come on, somebody. It's going to be real. Oh, it's too loud at that church. Okay, honey, you're going to hate heaven. It's going to be louder. The devil's been loud when he's condemning you. The devil's loud with LGBTQ plus IA on the internet. The devil's loud with pornography programming your mind. The devil's loud with Disney and all of the propaganda coming out. The devil's loud from the Vatican. The devil's loud through the Illuminati. The devil's loud. Oh, yeah, come on, somebody. The devil's real loud. It's about time that we get louder because the lion of the tribe of Judah is roaring on the inside of me. And I see the head of the lion over London. Freemasonry, we're going to roar louder. Somebody's canceling a subscription right now under the sound of my voice. Isn't it funny? We're okay with multinational companies ran by principalities and powers taking over the airways and every single radio and every single Uber. But we're standing up and saying we're going to be loud too. We're going to be loud too. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Religion teaches you to pray like this. Oh, Lord, if it be thine will, please, I beseech thee today forth. Why are you talking to God in Elizabethan English, homie? You're not Shakespeare. And we come before God with this pious, religious, false humility. But see, I don't have a orphan spirit that says, I hope God does it. I actually have impartation. Let me tell you the difference, because we're about to transition. You feel it in the room. 
Uh, where's my daughter? So my daughter, Bella. Can you give him a wave, babe? My daughter, Bella, when she was younger, her and her sister, Everly, were fighting over some, some toys. And all of a sudden, she, uh, she came to me and she said, Everly's not sharing with me, Dad. She's a teenager now, so I, I had to make sure that story wasn't from last week. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I said, well, you go upstairs and you tell Everly, Dad said so. Now, when she went upstairs, she said, Dad said you got to share your toys with me. And Everly obeyed Bella because she was actually in fear of the consequences of disobeying me. So if you want to know why demons are about to obey me tonight. <laughs> my dad said so. Give it back. Give it back. My dad said so. Demons don't fear Mike Signorelli, but they fear my dad. They fear the, they fear the consequence of not listening to my dad. Dad said, give it back. That's how spiritual authority works. And you know, the sons of Sceva, you know, everybody wants to be a deliverance minister nowadays. Don't worry, at the end of tonight, there's going to be an impartation and all of you are going to receive the anointing and you're all going to become official demon slayers tonight. Come on, she's the most excited. She looked at me like, oh, that's why I got the first seat. But let me tell you, let me tell you, the sons of Sceva tried to do deliverance without the relationship dynamic. And they weren't connected to the one that does the delivering. And the demons literally beat them. Actually, I like this better. It stripped them down naked. The devil will humiliate you. And so I'm not operating in my own confidence. I'm not operating in arrogance, lest I be stripped naked before you trying to do the work of deliverance. But through relationship, my father is the deliverer. And the Bible says, by the finger of God, we are delivered. So by his finger, many of you are going to be delivered tonight. And it's going to be a powerful, powerful time. Powerful. Oh, you feel the expectation. And we're not going to have any illegal sons of Sceva. By the power of Mike Signorelli, I adjure you. The demon said, I know Paul. I know Peter. But who is you? That's how we talk in America. Who is you? And so tonight, already some people got delivered. Praise God. Do you feel better? Do you feel better? Your face is glowing right now. Yeah, that was a powerful moment, wasn't it? Yeah, the anointing's entering your body right now because he's going to finish what he started. Come on, somebody stand behind her. God says, I'm restoring the years that the locust and the canker worm and the palmer worm, even from abuse, even from trauma and abuse, the Lord says, I'm releasing you from the bands of your past now. Now. Shoo. Wow, power of God's all over her. Father, bless him. Finish it, God. Whew, the glory of the Lord's all over this man. More. Whew. <laughs> Some of you have been praying for weight loss, and the Lord divinely brought you here to make it happen. <laughs> See? You like how God will do that? You'll say, God, God, give me patience. He says, go ahead and get in line. God, help me lose weight. He said, come on, let's sweat together. Now, as a rule of thumb, if I pass out, we're all in trouble. But if I keep going, you're okay. And if you get slain in the spirit and you stop breathing, you'll be in heaven. You'll close your eyes and, and open them in heaven. Praise God. I like how you celebrated that. So he's like, whoa, I got to go to work tomorrow. Woo! <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> now, the only reason I'm making you laugh is so that I can cut you. You know, a good doctor, they put the gas mask on. And you're like, I feel funny. And you're like, I'm going to stab you. <laughs> and so right now, I got to bring you to a place of surrender. We have some people. Who, who is here for the first service? 
Praise God. Okay, they know the drill. I'll do it quicker. But I want to just tell you, there's a false gospel, and there is a spirit of Antichrist. And before Antichrist is an individual, it's a system. And there are many iterations of Antichrist. It's a system that will give rise to a person. But the system must be installed before the person is revealed. So, oh, it's getting heavy, isn't it? You guys like the meat of the word. You must watch my YouTube. So, who said PM over here? Bless you. Okay, I like you. Unique, unique. You're going to be an elder. You're getting promoted tonight. Before Antichrist is revealed, the system has to be installed. But let me explain. I want to explain deeper. Anything that's the opposite of Yeshua is anti-Yeshua. There are not three teams. And people live their lives like there's team Satan, there's team myself, and then there's team Yeshua. The truth is there's only two. And even those who are in the world thinking they're an atheist living for themselves are in fact living for the devil. Matter of fact, Jesus used the phrase sons of the devil. Because you'll always act like the DNA that you've received. And so what happens is many people are living their life. No, I'm going to do this quickly so we can move on. But they're living their life. Like if you go on the streets right now of, of London, greater London, and you ask people, are you a Christian? What are most of them going to say? Some are going to say no, but a lot of people will think that they're a Christian because they were baptized as a baby. Can I just tell you, if you were baptized as a baby, that was for your parents, but that was not for you? Did you know that there are no babies baptized in Scripture? Somebody just got their mind blown. What was that priest doing? I don't know. But that's not in the Bible. Every person who is baptized with water did so knowingly and consciously, and it was a decision to enter the kingdom of heaven. And just because some of you have uh, actually attended a church, standing in a church does not make you a Christian any more than standing in a garage makes you a car. Yeah. And so there are many people, yeah, I'm a Christian. I go to church. You know who else is in the church? The devil. And the devil loves attending churches where he doesn't get confronted. Oh, he hates our church. <laughs> Hide your kids. Hide your wife, devil. So let me tell you, Colossians chapter 3, I want to read this briefly. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven. Everybody say that. Think about the things of heaven. Say it again. Think about the things of heaven. Most of what you thought about today was not the things of heaven. Watch this. If you think about the things below, you will set your gaze down below. And guess what? Matter of fact, when you go back to Genesis, when the serpent that tempted, Adam, tempted Eve was cursed in the garden, it said you're cursed to your belly to crawl on the ground. There's below and there's above. And the Bible is saying think about the things above. But most of our thinking is about the things below, physical realm things. Okay, can I go a little bit deeper for a few moments? And your life, it says, for you died to this life. Say, I died to this life. Okay, let me just point something out. At most churches, especially in America, you never died to it. You suffocated it, but you never killed it. You starved it, but it never died. You wounded it, but it never died. And what happens is some of you have taken a break from sinning, but never stopped sinning. And you get a five-day break and a 10-day break and a 14-day break. And then about three, day three, four, or five, you're like, God, look, I'm ready. I feel comfortable coming back to you. And then you relapse again. Now, the front door of this building, if we left it open for 52 weeks in a row and never closed it, not, maybe not on the first day, maybe not the second, maybe not the 52nd, but 53, 54, at a certain point in time, a fox would wander in here. And then a, and then a mouse or a rat. And then a squirrel. And then, you see, here's what happens. Some of you have repeatedly gone back to sin and left the door wide open. And you did not have a demon the first day you did that sin. 
You did not have a demon the second day you've done that sin. You didn't have a demon three weeks. But at a certain amount of time, unrepentant sin will leave a door wide open for you to come up under the influence of demons. Oh, it's getting a little serious now. You too. You too. I picked on him this morning. You got delivered. You're clean. You're good. <laughs> Foolish people say, I'm a Christian. I can't be under the influence of, the de of demons. Those same Christians who say, I have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit can't cohabitate with a demonic spirit, fail to recognize in the book of Job that Lucifer himself actually has access to heaven and can stand before the very throne of God without being vaporized and even ask God himself, give me Job. And God said, go ahead and have him. And so, no, I don't believe that demons are in your spirit. But I, if the Holy Spirit is in your spirit, but I do believe that you can be demonized, which is to be up under the influence of demons in your mind in your emotions, and even in your will, and sometimes in your physical body. See, in every church in America, they'll pray for you for healing. James chapter 5, bring sick people to the church, have the elders anoint them with oil, and they'll be healed. But very few pastors in America will actually discern, like Jesus did, if it's actually a spirit of infirmity. Not everything's biological, some of it's supernatural. And so how do you know? There's some undiagnosable conditions, chronic illnesses, where the doctors run reports over and over again and can't find the root cause of it. Wave at me if anybody here has a medical mystery. Wave at me, anybody, undiagnosable. It may be demonic. And people will make fun of you for saying things like this. But here's what they don't laugh at. When people are in meetings like this and they go back to the doctor and they get a medical verification and I have a movie called The Domino Revival coming out across almost every theater in America October 24th where I show medically verifiable miracles that happen in me meetings just like this. How many of you know even Hollywood's about to bow its knee before Yeshua? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I found out that the CEO of Fathom listens to my preaching, and that just happens to be the guy that controls the three largest movie theater chains in America. I said, I got a movie idea. Let's do this thing. So you have to choose. Do I want to be an expert in this realm, or do I want to be an expert in this realm? Because, see, what happens is you can go through 23 years of schooling to become an expert in the physical realm, but be a fool in the things of the spirit. And sometimes when I speak like this, I'm offending people's sensibilities. But I would, I'm, I'm trying to offend you all the way into a healing right now. I'm trying to offend you all the way into freedom right now. Because some of you need to recognize you may be dealing with something demonic. It started as flesh, but you left the door wide open. Pastor Mike, where's your proof? I'm a theologian. Well, I'm a theologian too. I started my own college. Got 136 students this year from across 16 nations. I got more degrees than a thermometer, but degrees don't give you authority. Submission gives you authority. What you know in your head doesn't cause the, the sickness to go away. It's who you're connected through, through your spirit. So some of you, I feel you warring with me right now. I'm getting a little sassy. You know, I serve Jehovah sassy too. Because I feel the tug of war. Some of you are so rational. It's what's keeping you in bondage. Some of you are so intellectual, it's what's stopping your breakthrough. Oh, I used to be an atheist. Used to. And so let me help you. When we get into moments like this, and we're about to do it right now, you have to choose, do I want to be in the supernatural spiritual realm where Jesus is Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, or do I want to stay in this physical realm where I am a son or a daughter of Satan? And the proof that I have biblically is David versus Saul. David, he sinned bad. Bathsheba, he saw her bathing, which was basically their version of ancient pornography. As a matter of fact, the men were at war, 
and David was supposed to be at war, but when he didn't do his assignment, he actually let his eyes take on a new competition. And see, some of you men that keep going back to pornography, your real problem is you're supposed to be at war, oh, come, but now you have a war within yourself, and you're chasing the wrong thing. Stop chasing something on a screen and start chasing the Lord Jesus Christ. Start chasing demons. Come on. Some of you got too much free time, and that's your problem. I'm too busy doing the will of my father some of you got to exhaust yourself for the body of christ and say i'm too tired to sin for real for real and so what happens is david never in a biblical account gets vexed by demons but saul does but david sinned and saul sinned what was the difference saul sinned and kept on sinning david sinned and every single time he ran back to God and said, forgive me, Lord, I've sinned. He was quick to repent. And so he slammed that door closed. So Colossians 3 says, you put that life to death. And this is what it says. Have nothing to do. Everybody say nothing. nothing. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires. Don't be greedy. For a greedy person is an idolater worshiping the things of this world because of these sins the anger of god is coming hello this is the new testament i'm reading from by the way so if you go to one of those churches that's like god is love he loves you the reckless love of god sloppy wet kiss yes he loves us oh yeah i love my child enough to discipline them too and love without discipline isn't love it's neglect and some of you, actually, you want me to tell you, some of you have pastors that don't preach on sin because they're sinning. <laughs> they're going to talk about something that they're doing. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, am I standing in front of you perfect? Not at all. Not at all. But sometimes what you're calling a process of sanctification is actually just an excuse of justification. Stop justifying how you say you love Yeshua, yet you do the things that Yeshua hates. You got to learn how to hate it like he hates it. It has to repulse you like it repulses him. It has to disgust you how it disgusts him. He's trying to bring his bride through a process to where you're without spot or blemish, but you got to say enough. Stop playing with it. Put it to death. You know why demons respond to me? Because I'm not on the same team. Jesus said you can't cast out a spirit by, the, by Beelzebub. You don't cast out a spirit by the spirit. You cast it out by an opposite spirit. Perfect love casts out all fear. So what happens is you cast out a spirit by an opposite spirit. So what happens is many of you guys are saying, God, raise me up in power. And he's saying, until you kill that thing. It is possible lest we nullify the cross. It is possible lest we diminish the power of the cross. I am not Gary Vanderchuk. I am not a guru. I'm not giving you a TED talk right now. I'm not in a college lecturing right now. I am preaching the unadulterated gospel. I am giving you the word of God. If it worked 2,000 years ago, it works today. If the blood still has its power, you're going to see that power on display. It has not lost its power. The blood has not lost its power. 15 years ago, 15 years ago, I was more of an idiot. <laughs> and I thought that I was going to, Bella was one year old. My biological father had just died. I was, my pastor over me went into infidelity. All of the people around me began to step out of ministry. My whole support structure completely was eliminated. And uh, I was in a low place. And as a man of God, I took Christian liberties 
You know Christian liberties. Oh, I can drink a little. Oh, I can smoke a little. See, the only problem is your dad thought the same thing, and that's how he became an alcoholic. Your grandfather thought, the, oh, it's just for a little pain in my body. Oh, it's just for a little stress in my life. Yeah, that's what your mom thought. That's what your grandmother thought. And see, what happens is the devil comes in and says, receive this comfort. I remember in being in marriage counseling, thinking I wanted to leave my wife, saying, I don't know if I could be with her anymore, and I got to get out of this marriage. I'll never forget, I unloaded every excuse I had for why I should leave my wife to the man of God when we were in a meeting, and he looked at me. And he says, I got one answer for you. You're a preacher, aren't you? I said, yeah, drunk one in bondage. And he said, is the cross enough or is it not enough? I come here to preach the cross to you. Is the cross enough for you to finally stop going back to that putrid sin? Is the cross enough for you to lay down that counterfeit addiction, which is a counterfeit comfort, which is an addiction? And the reason why I say that is because God's not coming to take anything away from you. He's coming to make an exchange. See, religion, when you go to St. Anthony's, when you go to the Catholic church down the street, when you go to the Methodist church or the Presbyterian church, they say to the young people, stop having sex. They tell you, stop getting drunk. But see, that's actually not the word of God. You know whose idea sex was? Oh, yeah, he had a good idea, didn't he? Come on, everybody's like, do I laugh? Do I say amen? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, you can say amen. Okay, okay. Somebody single said amen so loud, I'm like, I'm going to have to pray for you. Somebody said amen. <laughs> sex was God's idea. Matter of fact, in the Bible, there's the new wine of the Holy Spirit, which is a drunkenness. And it actually, the apostle said, you, I, I pray that you would speak in tongues even more. There's being filled with it more. So God doesn't want to take anything away from you tonight. He wants to exchange it. So what will happen is you'll take your sexual perversion and your addiction and you'll give it to him and that he will help you righteously fulfill it through the covenant of marriage between a man and a woman. And you'll have the most mind-blowing sex in your life. And you'll say, pornography couldn't get me this. The alphabet community couldn't get me this. Come on, somebody. But Jesus has helped me receive what he wants. And we're about to make an exchange. You think I'm playing. But I'm sick and tired of what the devil's been doing to God's people. So here's what I want to ask you right now. And we're going to just take a moment. 99% obedience is 100% disobedience. I mean, wh why get to heaven and stand before the holiness of God, the very throne room where there's angels covered in eyeballs, and you're seeing Moses and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Peter, and you're saying, I struggled with pornography. I struggled with, with gossip. Do you know that the Bible says where there is gossip, there is every other evil work? Do you know what's worse than taking salt and making a pentagram in your basement and doing a seance? You know what opens a bigger portal to the demonic? Gossip. Oh, come on. I'm deep in demonology. Matter of fact, a lot of the occult practices are low-ranking witchcraft as compared to what happens through people who call themselves saints. Oh, I'm coming for you. So what I'm asking you is you got to be willing to make an exchange. Because in every single family, there's one person that's destined, just like Moses. When Moses was born, his mom said, I have to put him in a wicker basket and float him down the river and get him to Pharaoh's courts because there's something different about Moses. The reason why you're here, the reason why you stood in line, the reason why you're in an overflow, the reason why there's no chairs and you're like, I'm willing to endure more of this is because something deep in your spirit is recognizing something in my spirit. Deep calls to deep. And right now, you know that you are the one in your family that's destined to finally break through. You're the one in your family that says it may have run in my family, but I am where it runs out. Come on, are there any generational bloodline curse breaking, devil stomping, curse breaking, chain breaking believers in the house? 
So right now, anybody who has a counterfeit comfort, I want you to throw it on the stage right now. I'm talking weed, pills, drugs, paraphernalia. If you want a 100% surrender, bring it to me right now. We did this this morning, but I know that there's some people who weren't here. Is there anybody here who's saying, Pastor Mike, I'm done. I'm done with this addiction. Yeah, bring it. Come, 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 come. Yeah, come on. Bring it. Come up front. Just lay it down at the altar right here. I'm talking weed, pills, anything, vape. That is not your identity. That is not who you are. Just lay it down. Who else? Who else? I know there's more. Come on, who else? Somebody was obedient. Come on, who's willing to give up counterfeit comforts? Come on, this is revival. Who's willing to give up? Who's willing to say, I'm getting high, but I'm getting high with the most high? <laughs> come on, I know there's some more. I'll wait. Yeah, come on, bring it up. Just drop it there. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on. What, what did you say? Janet, lift your hands. Come on, there's more. Wow. Wow. Thank you for this. Janet, your name's Janet. Janet just told me I came here to get rid of this. Janet, this is not your identity. This is not who you are. But you know what? The devil's been attacking your life. He's been trying to destroy you. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, you're a warrior. She just confirmed it. She said, literally, he's visited me even in my sleep to try to take me. But see, here's what happens. This represents the enemy's lie that says, take this and it'll calm your nerves. Take this and it'll help you. Take this and you'll get through. But see, right now you're releasing this. I'm going to pray over you and there's many more. Is there anybody else who needs to bring anything before we pray? Come on. All the way from the back. If you need to come, come. Just lay it down at the altar. I'm giving you an opportunity. I want to pray for you right now. Come on, more are coming. Huh? Praise God, yes. She, you know what? She just brought food. Freedom. 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 Whom the sun sets free. Whom the sun sets free. Come on, Janet, I haven't forgot about you. Somebody just symbolically brought a phone case. Some of you are destined to reach millions of people through your phone. When your phone stops putting you in bondage, you'll break bondages through your phone. Come on, we got some kind of prescription. Wow, look at the, oh. Dip. We call this dip. Tobacco. Whose tobacco is this? Wow. Wow. Praise God. Wow, more is coming. Praise God. Okay, let me just tell you. The Lord gave me a revelation about this. We're going to pray for Janet and everybody else. There's this song that goes, day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Okay, okay, not yet, not yet, not yet. <laughs> Stephen, you sing so beautifully. I can hear your voice from here. He's got the voice of an angel, really. Now, everybody wants to hear Jenny sing, but Stephen's got the real voice. He's like, oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He raps. <laughs> so that song talks about incense. What happens with incense, and really some of you have seen it in Catholicism, but it really goes back to the old temple, the first temple. And incense represented prayers. 
and prayer at the incense would have an aroma or a fragrance that would be released and it would actually go up matter of fact as the priest would enter the holy of holies there would be incense that would create a cloud that was thick enough so that when the presence of god manifested in that place that they didn't die so satan doesn't create he counterfeits so what is this it's counterfeit incense it's vapor and so what and it's fragranced oh the devil is a liar so what you're called to do janet is you're called to intercession you're called to let the incense arise you're called to release it through a new covenant paradigm. And every single one of you that brought out al- nicotine, it's a counterfeit that actually says, let incense arise. So what we're going to do right now is this. We're going to sing that song together. And I want to pray for everybody with an addiction. But the Holy Spirit just right now, yeah, praise God. Come on. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Pills. See, we're gonna, you guys can continue to come with addictions while I'm ministering. But I want you to look at this stage. These are people saying, I'm not just letting God take it away. He's giving me so much better. He's giving me so much better. So we're going to sing this song, Let Incense Arise. And as we sing it, we're going to break addictions off of people. But the Holy Spirit just told me, is there anybody here addicted to alcohol? Just lift your hand. Anybody addicted to alcohol says, I want to be free from alcohol. Anybody, just lift your hand. Okay, you. Come here, come here. Thank you, come here. Oh, here, sorry. Alcohol. Wow. And other drugs. Wow, you stop, but it's just alcohol. You look so precious. You know, what I've learned all over my years is that you don't know who's doing what. Amen. I never would have thought you would be struggling with alcohol. There's more, though. It's just she was more bold, and some of you are still lying. Okay, who? Uh, alcohol? Oh, now it's half. Now, notice there's no music playing because this is not emotionalism. Matter of fact, Jesus said, count the cost. Nobody builds a house unless they first determine the cost. It's going to cost you everything now. You can't want the glory, but hold on to sin. You can't want the presence of God, but hold on to addiction. You can't have the comforter, but then going after a form of comfort. You must be willing to abandon and forsaken all. To say yes to Julie, I had to say no to six billion women. Covenant is fidelity. To say yes to Jesus is to say no to everything else. Am I installing something in you? Okay, now, alcohol? Come on. You're becoming a man of God. Come on, come closer. Make room. I'm going to say it through the mic. Is that all right? He said, and cocaine. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Revival! Revival! In the American church, we got a coffee in one hand, a bagel in the other hand, and we say a 30-second prayer called the sinner's prayer, and we keep on sinning. But in revival, we confess our sins one to another. We come out of hiding, and we say, God, do what you will with me. I'm coming out of hiding. If the world can come out of the closet, I'm coming out too. Come on, something hits you. See, what happens when you do this is that you come into a deeper realm of glory. Alcohol, cocaine. What else? Come on, who else had alcohol? Come, on, come a little bit closer. Alcohol. Yeah, come a little bit closer. Come a little bit closer. I'm about to pray. Fight through the crowd for a second. I know that you guys are in the overflow too. It's very full here. We're about to pray. Woo! We're about to deal with addiction. We're about to have a mass deliverance break out in this place. We're about to deal with some stuff. Okay, alcohol, alcohol, cocaine. Now, let me ask you this. Is there anybody addicted to their phone? <laughs> oh, Lord, I'll just face this way. 
Worship team, face the other way. It's getting hot. Come on. <laughs> You're going to have to, you pray for me and I'll pray for you. <laughs> I don't have time to read my Bible. I don't have time to read my Bible. Isn't it funny that you read your Bible for three minutes at night and fall asleep, but scroll on TikTok for three hours? There's a spirit behind it, and I'm trying to help you because after tonight, no spirit but the Holy Spirit. No spirit but the Holy Spirit. No spirit, but if I'm on TikTok, it's to declare the gospel. If I'm on, if I'm on Instagram, it's to keep shouting the name of Yeshua. If I'm on Facebook, it's to put the book up in your face, devil. God ain't trying to take away your phone. He's trying to use you as a global voice of the gospel to all people. Stop using your phone to masturbate and start using your phone to bring down territorial demons and start bringing your... Oh, I'm going to say it tonight. You can't have... Oh. Do you hear me? You can't be on two teams. They call me a demon slayer because I don't work for Beelzebub. You cannot work for the devil and cast the devil out. You can't hold his hand when you want his comfort and hold God's when you want his. You have to forsake. This is a ruthless message, but nothing less is the gospel. <sighs> have you been praying for me? I feel it. Anything else? Addictions. Who said prescription drugs? It's, you know what's funny? I literally heard the word pharmakia in my spirit before you said that. Can I just tell you that the science behind pills for your mind, read it for yourself. Don't, don't just take my word for it. It's inconclusive. Most people get worse. You know that three paragraphs at the end that they have to whisper as fast as they can on the commercial is how many different ways it'll kill you. What? I mean, this whole demonic infrastructure that we call society is engineered to rob you of your mind. And people will tell you, you became a Christian, you're out of your mind. Yeah, I am. I'm out of my carnal mind, and now I have the mind of Christ, and I'd rather be out of my mind than have your mind. And when I was in my own mind, I was feeling all kind of depressed and anxiety-ridden, but I have the mind of Christ. And so guess what? A lot of this medications for your mind is just pharmacia. It's just, it's old school witchcraft. And instead of witches and warlocks, we have doctors. Now, my church is filled with medical professionals because there is legitimate versions of that. Luke was a physician. But I'm here to tell some of you have prescription medicines and the doctors have become legal drug dealers. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, I have a pain. Oh, it hurts. It hurts worse. And the devil wants... It... Come on, somebody. All right, I think we're about ready to deal with it, but... Now, do you all still love me? Yes. You know, faithful are the wounds of a friend. You know that, right? Better is an open rebuke than a private curse. So I love you. I love you more than the other pastor. I, I, not more than this one, but, but I love you. But I love you enough to say, look at me, young man. It's possible to walk out of this place and never do it again for the rest of your life. Yes. We have to stop lowering the bar. Because when we lower the bar, we diminish the cross. When we lower the bar, we diminish the blood. When we lower the bar, we say Christ can't do it. But greater he that is in me than he that is in the world. If God be for me, who can be against me? If a thousand fall at one side and ten thousand at another, I'll still be standing. When you know the word of God, when you set your eyes upon the things of heaven, you are equipped with power. So we're not leaving this place and going back. Can I get an amen? Okay, so we're going to sing this song, and while we do it, I want us to just begin to go through a, a time of repentance together. Because Janet right here, she literally said, I came here, I stood in line, and I went through all this just so I can give up these, this vape. 
Let's exchange vape for the fragrance. Let's exchange vape for the glory. Let's exchange the smoke of tobacco for the incense of intercession. You know what's funny? It started in Yakima, and I received over two dozen emails the night after this happened. I was in a tent in Yakima, and this sweet fragrance just begin to fill the entire tent. As soon as it filled the, the tent, and I smelled it but didn't say anything about it, multiple medically verifiable miracles started breaking out. The next day, I got two dozen emails from people saying, Pastor Mike, it was one of the weirdest experiences of my life. Right before all the miracles broke out, I smelled this super sweet aroma that filled the air. It's the compassion of the Father. So right now, let's just begin to to deal with it. Come on. Day and night, night and day, let it sense the Day and night, night and day, let it sense the Day and night, night and day, let it sense the Day and night, night and day, Come on, lift your hands. All those who struggle with addiction especially. Because the Lord is getting ready to touch you right now. We break and release you right now from all powers of darkness. Every demonic stronghold, I pull it down right now in the name of Jesus. Be loose from all addiction, Jesus' name. There it is. Wow. Alcoholism, I break the curse of it right now in the name of Jesus. I break the curse. Be free now. Yep, there it is. Every spirit of addiction. Go now in the name of Jesus. Loose her now. Yep, there it is. Out now. Every single one of you that entered through drug usage, out now in the name of Jesus. Jesus' name. Freedom. Right now, in the name of Jesus, every curse be broken. You will do what the Lord has called you to do. Wow, come on. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense Come on, this is the man who said, I want to be free from cocaine. <laughs> night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Worshipper, arise. Come on, we release this man into the fullness of worship before the king. Worshipper, arise. Come on, the anointing is coming upon you. Yes. Woo. Loose him, Lord. From every chain. Woo. Come on, there it is. More, Holy Ghost. More, more, more. Woo. Yeah, come on, speak it out. Come on, prophesy. Come on, prophesy, son. Prophesy! Fire! 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 Fire upon you!
Isn't it funny how they call alcohol spirits? No spirit, but the Holy Spirit. Isn't it funny how they, see, we, see, that's why we got to confess alcohol. Because some of you are like, but it's a Christian liberty. No, it's not. It's a demonic bondage. And so what? The higher the calling, the less options you have. Some of you are not Levites, you're Nazarites. Nazarites shouldn't let it touch their lips. It's not about what you can get away with. It's about what you're called to. Sometimes when you got a higher calling, when you got a Nazarite calling, it's not going to make sense to the Oh, come on, somebody. You need to exchange justification with sanctification. It's not about what I can get away with. It's about what I can give away. Oh, I feel freedom. I feel freedom. I feel freedom. Freedom from food. Free, look at this. Freedom from tobacco. Freedom from vapes. Freedom from pharmacia. Oh, the devil lost big tonight. The le- oh. Woo. Okay, who wants to go deeper? We got, we got a little bit of time left. Who wants to go deeper? I just got word today that somebody who was estranged from a family member for 13 years, we went through this morning a portion of saying forgiveness and releasing people. Wow, praise God. I smelled that fragrance. <laughs> I'm sorry, it stopped me in my tracks. All of a sudden, uh, they forgave, and their sister was here and forgave, and they reunited today after 13 years of being estranged. I want to do something that I didn't do this morning, and I want to do this. We got to do this quickly, and there might only be one. There might be more, but are there any? But see, a lot of what revival is, is revival is a public renouncing. A lot of revival is just saying, I'm coming out of hiding and we're gonna get this thing dealt with. And that's the power that you experience when people are confessing. Are there any married couples here who are on the verge of divorce or separation? And when I told the story, is your spouse here with you? Is your spouse here with you? I want you to come up. And there may only be one couple. Husband and wife, there's been fighting in the marriage. There's been division in the marriage. There's been a, a, like, like a wedge between you. I want you to come up. Make your way forward. Even if there's just one couple, I want to pray for you because the Lord showed me something in the spirit, and it's going to be a twofold healing for the audience before we move on. Yeah, come on. If you have your spouse, I'm talking husband and wives, that are like, you know what? We've been fighting. It's been an unusual amount of division, and your, and your spouse is with you. Is there anybody? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna. I, I hear you in the spirit before you said it. We're gonna go there. I've been doing this for a while. I'm a professional. But I'm talking about a husband and a wife here. And some of you are like he didn't hear from God. And it's like no. Okay, we're coming. We're coming. They are coming. Okay, that's good. Now, for all of you whose spouses are not here, we're gonna we're gonna pray for them. Yeah, come on. Yeah, just come up to the, to the edge of the stage. Okay, it's you? Okay, who else though? Is there one more couple? They're coming? A couple, they're coming you said? Okay, keep coming forward. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do because this is a form of revival that gets neglected. This is a form of revival that gets neglected. Now listen, we're gonna run rush shot over a whole bunch of demons in a little while. If you were here this morning, have you ever seen that much deliverance at one time? It was incredible. We're going there, and I know many of you came for deliverance, but the Lord's having me deal with things because by the time we get to deliverance, it's going to be easy. Okay, so it's you guys here. Make room for them. What a cute couple, by the way. Uh, okay, and there's another couple coming. Is there another couple from Overflow that's coming? Huh? But he's not here. Okay, we're going to pray for all of you that your spouse isn't here. So just one. None in the balcony. Okay. Do you love this woman? You do? Do you love this man? Okay, now I'm a pastor, so I can legally do this. 
You know, the Bible gives a description of our relationship with Christ as a marriage. And so your marriage is supposed to be designed by God to put Christ on display. And the enemy will come in and put a wedge because there's a mission. The Bible says a threefold cord is not easily broken. That's you, you, and Yeshua. So we're going to pray in a moment, but we're going to do a vow renewal together right now. Is that all right? Now, why are you smiling like that? You want to kiss her at the end, I can tell. Is he the problem or are you the problem? Okay, that was a trick question. It's both of you. Now, for everybody here who's a product of divorce, oh, the devil's mad right now. For everybody here who's a product of divorce, you're about to see something that you never saw a reconciliation of a marriage. And what's going to happen, and this is a form of revival, is their marriage is about to be healed and restored right in front of you, but your wounds are about to get healed too. Because there's many of you that whenever there was an argument, there was a divorce. Whenever there was a fight, there was a divorce. Whenever there was tension, there was separation. And you've never seen humility. You've never seen forgiveness. But you're about to see it now. And I want to honor you as a man. Because if more men in the United Kingdom were like you, our churches wouldn't have enough room. Because you came to a revival event in a 74 degrees room. And you said, as a, as a man, I'm going to do this thing. And then you let yourself potentially be embarrassed in front of a thousand people because you believe. Yeah. And so you're a sign. The word, you know what? We don't need more international evangelists. We don't need more viral influencers. We need more men like you. Yeah. yeah. We need more men like you with the simple gospel that stay faithful. So I want you to face your bride. You got a good one, too. You got a good one, too. Come on now. You did. How long have you guys been married? Okay. Yeah. So it's a newer marriage, and the enemy's trying to come in. Yeah, look at that. Listen, you've been praying for this, haven't you? The Lord heard your prayers. The Lord heard your prayers. Yeah, there's destiny connected to this moment. And for Gen Z, Gen Z, I want you to see this. Because you know what marriage is? Two servants trying to outserve each other. How many single people do we have? Lift your hand. Oh, Lord Jesus. Okay, look around, look around, look around, look around, look around. I'm just kidding. Put your hand down. You didn't even get free from addiction yet. Get out of here with that. The Lord rebuke you. Come on, intercede for me, mama. Oh, that's why we only had one couple. You're going to have to mentor all these people. You all came, half of you came here to get free. The other half came here to get married. <laughs> you all said yes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> oh, Lord, we have a mess. Pastor, are you going to do baptisms next week? Because we're going to need to baptize these people. I feel it. Okay, but I also want to say one more thing, and I'm, I'm joking because we're dealing with heavier things, and, uh, but here's the thing I wanted to say. Many of you who are single, let this be a lesson. You don't marry somebody for what they give you. You want sex? That's how you use a prostitute, not a wife. You want money? That's how you use a casino, not a husband. Marriage is two servants trying to outserve each other. And so the reason why the kingdom of heaven is likened to a marriage is because we are indebted to Christ and we spend our entire life trying to outserve him. Oh, Christ, you gave everything. I'll give everything. And we're in a battle. Who can give more? And he always wins. That's marriage. So what you're seeing right now is if you don't know how to say you're sorry, don't say your vows. Oh, I'm helping somebody. I'm a spiritual father. They call me Papa Sigs. Y'all know that, right? 
And some of you, your dad taught, he taught you how to hit, but hitting don't make you tough. Hitting the floor on your knees makes you tough. Praying to God, Jehovah. Come on, humbling yourself. Telling you your, wi- or your wife she's beautiful. That's what a real man does. Come on, are you single? Okay, not for long with that kind of amen. <laughs> That's the only word he received from me all day today. <laughs> okay, you guys ready? Okay, so face each other. Okay, we're going to start with you, okay? I want you to say this, to look, in, look at your wife and just tell her, say, I love you. <laughs> say, I give you my entire life to serve you. I'm asking you to forgive me for every way I hurt you, every word I've said, every way I've used my hands. I'm sorry. I'm going to be the man that God showed you. I'm going to lead our house as a priest, as a priest and a prophet and a king. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing on that. I feel the anointing. Oh, look, she's already, you better hold that. Hold your horses, sister. We're still in church now. Now, listen, I taught you something now. (laughs) <laughs> Look, he's looking at me. <laughs> Women, they don't need eloquent prayers. But when you pray for a woman, it unlocks something in her, the deepest parts of her. Women, they don't, they don't need a Mike Signorelli. They just need a simple prayer. You come to your wife. You lay your hand on her. You begin to pray for her. And I'm telling you, that's all she wants. And you don't have to speak King James English. Thou be though. <laughs> You just say, Heavenly Father, I pray for my wife right now. Sometimes you put your hand on her head, and you literally pray for her, and and tears will fall down her cheek, and she'll say, this is what I needed the most, and then I'll tell you the other secret. You'll have the best love life in all of London. (laughs) Come on, don't clap for that. Okay, okay. Okay, now I want you to look at your husband and just say, Husband, I'll serve you. I devote my life to you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the man you are. I'll let you lead me. I'll let you pray for me and guide me. You are the man of my dreams and the answer to my prayers. Okay, now, why don't you guys give yourself a hug, and I'm going to pray for you while you embrace. Oh, yeah. Woo! Whoa, come on, somebody. Come on. Go ahead. You can kiss your bride. Go ahead. Woo. Come on, everybody. Stretch your hands towards him. We break the power of every demon trying to divide this couple. And we say unity. Yes, we thank you, Father, that what you join together, no man will separate. What you put together, to, wow, look at this. Power is coming out. Look at their hands joined together. This is unity, unity, unity. This is a prophetic witness and a sign to London that marriages are going to be restored, that homes are going to be restored, and that the hus- one will put to flight a thousand, but two ten thousand exponential together. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at you. Why are you crying? Look what the Lord's doing. You've never seen that, have you? Come here, come here, come here. Give Papa Sigs a hug. Wow. 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 Come on. Come on. The Lord rebuke you. Here, Sebastian. I bind you now in the name of Jesus. And I command you, I will. I will no God not go back. Matter of fact, you're going, devil. 
to the abyss now. Up and out. Looser now. Go in the name of Jesus. Get up out of here, devil. Out now. I'm not going anywhere. You're going out now. Go now. Let her down. You will come out. She is not yours. She belongs to the king. She's been bought by the blood of the lamb. You do not own her. This is a daughter of the king. I command you to the abyss now. I'm not playing with you, devil. Go now in the name of Jesus. Out. Out now. Now. I break every generational curse 40 generations back on her father's side. I break every generational curse on her mother's side. Going back 40 and 50 generations, the blood of the lamb testifies against you. Every familiar spirit, every spirit of witchcraft and control, every spirit of divination, come out of her now. Every spirit of Jezebel, come out of her right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of Ahab, out. Now, go. One, two, out now. Now, the devil hates reconciliation. <laughs> the devil hates reconciliation. And see, this woman, no, the. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me now. Open your eyes and look at me, yes. Yeah, you see Jesus? <laughs> Even the demons know when they see Jesus. Even the demons know. This precious woman, look at me. This precious woman does not belong to you. I said, look at me. I take authority over you. She was not dedicated. She belongs to Yeshua. The blood of Jesus is upon her. I break every covenant now. I break every spoken word incantation, every covenant and every curse every demonic dedication. I sever every ungodly soul tie. I break every demonic spell, and I speak to you now to come out from the root. Out now. Go. Come on, it's happening right now. To the abyss. To the abyss. It's happening now. Up and out from the root. Every spirit of rejection. Every spirit of rejection. Come on, let her go for a second. Let, let her go for a second. Let her go for a second. I break every spell of divination and witchcraft. All occult practices, even in the bloodline, I break it now. In the name of Jesus, every spirit come out of her mind, every spirit come out of her emotions, come out of her will right now. Go right now. Out now. Out. 
I'm not playing with you, devil. Your time is up. I execute judgment. There it is. Back off, back off. Shh. Come on. She's being delivered. Out. Now, team, you continue to pray for her. Now, listen, here's what happened. Marriage is a covenant. Covenants are always established by blood. It used to be, now I know we have children here, but they need to hear the truth. It used to be that the covenant of marriage was established by blood, the blood on the wedding bed. Sometimes it was physical, sometimes it was a, uh, a, a, a um, it was, it, it was a, uh, Lord, what am I looking for? Sometimes the blood wasn't literal in, in the marriage bed because it's not always there, but sometimes it's metaphorical, it's a symbol. So when we begin to deal with the covenant of marriage, I was working my way towards breaking covenants with the devil, and the devil got so intimidated with what was getting ready to happen. A lot of times, demons in this atmosphere, they know, listen, I'm not like, I'll stay here all night. I got no plan B. I don't need it. Look, Julie already took an Uber back home with my daughter. I ain't got nothing else to do but terrorize the devil here in London. But as this precious woman started to get deep inner healing, deep inner healing, and I heard the Lord say, I'm going to finish what the devil so rudely interrupted. <laughs> what I heard the Lord say is that the latter shall be greater than the former. And the end of a thing is better than the beginning, my daughter. And I will restore the years that the locust and the palmer worm and the canker worm have eaten. And I heard the Lord say, isn't it just like me to give you a front row seat for restoration? Isn't it just like me to give you a front row seat for restoration? The Lord said, I will do a greater thing. The latter will be greater than the former. Condemnation, your power is broken. Guilt and shame, your power is broken. And a new level of worship is coming out. A new level of worship. Oh! A new level of worship is coming out. It's being deposited right now. Unashamed. I silence every voice of condemnation. Shut your mouth, devil! I break every deception from the enemy right now. You will lie to her no longer. Who the peace of God is all over you. I feel it. Do you feel that? The peace of God. You haven't felt that peace in a while. There's been a lot of warfare in your mind. Yeah, that deep crying that you're doing, it's grief coming out. Grief. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in. I declare the end of a mourning season. I declare the end of a grieving season. Somebody is coming out of grieving. Somebody's coming out of mourning. Somebody's about to give depression depression. Somebody's about to give anxiety anxiety. Somebody's about to give fear, fear. Somebody's about to reverse it. Oh, uh, we got this game in America, called, called, in America called Uno. Somebody needs to play that reverse card on the devil right now. Y'all got that? Y'all got Uno here? Throw down that reverse card and say, devil, the only one depresses you. When I wake up and get out of the bed, you're the one who's going to be tormented. Devil! Somebody say Reverse! I felt that because I, I just saw a reverse card being put in your hand. Yeah. Whew. <laughs> Whew, I can't wait to hear her, hear her worship. Going to take us to the throne, girl. Okay, where were we at before these low-ranking demons try to make a fool of themselves? Okay, they're still praying with her, praise God. Loose her right now in the name of Jesus. Out! Go! 
now. Out. Out. From her father's side in the bloodline. Out now. Go. Anger. Murder. The curse of murder is broken off of her now. She is not the sins of her ancestors. She's a new creation through Christ. Go! Bitterness, anger, murder, out! Spirit of bitterness. Look at me. How do you feel? How do you feel? Wow, your whole face just changed right in front of me. Wow. You feel better? Face. Come on, these deliverances. I told you it ain't going to be hard tonight. All right. Okay, let's do this right now. Because see, there's a wave of deliverance that's about to hit. You feel it usually starts trickling, and then it starts downpouring. You need to forgive the people who've wronged you. You need to release the people that have hurt you. On the count of three, from the front to the back, even in the overflow... We're going to say the names out loud of everybody who hurt and wronged us. And we're going to say, I forgive them. And you've got to make a choice to say it. We did this this morning. There's many new people here today. But when you look at Colossians 3, it's very clear that we must put to death envy, bitterness, anger, strife. So we're going to release some people. Okay? Are you ready? Now, when we do this, I want you to let the Holy Spirit lead you. Because he'll even begin to show you faces. And as those faces appear, say their names out loud. How many of you are going to make a commitment to not cooperate with the devil? Just wave your hand. Okay, okay, okay. What do I mean cooperate with the devil? Oh, I don't want to be grunting and screaming and shouting. Actually, I have more respect for these people because what they're saying is I'm not going to hide it and work in conjunction with the devil. I'm going to get rid of this stuff. Matter of fact, one of the reasons why they manifested so easily is because the demons on the inside of them started figuring out, oh no, my host just got really real about repentance. My host just started getting real about surrender. My host started getting real about forgiveness. And those demons Demons manifested because they started getting so intimidated because the person that they're living inside of started saying, Jesus, forgive me. Wash me with your blood. And the devil's like, oh, no, I better get up on out of here. <laughs> Freedom! Freedom! <laughs> Chain breakers in the room! Come on, band. I'll let you play. I'll let you chill out for a while. <laughs> come on. People are starting to get delivered all over the room right now. Yeah, come on. Come on, worship team. Get ready. You know that song, Chain Breaker? Maybe Jenny will help us. I don't know. But we're about to do a wave of deliverance in this place. There's demons already starting to get irritated and agitated. We're about to get delivered in this place. On the count of three, we're going to give up everybody we've been holding on forgiveness. I love you, but if you were raped, if you were molested, if you, were, if you had incest, it's time to forgive the person who did it. If you, were, if you were left and abandoned in a marriage, it's time to forgive them. If you have a toxic ex that abused you, a narcissistic abuser, it's time to forgive them. You hear the sound of demons coming out already? They hate the sound of forgiveness. And you're not going to forgive these people because they deserve it. You're forgiving them because you deserve to finally get free. You're forgiving them because Christ forgave you. And see, what happens in this moment is we take away legal rights and they have to go. Are you ready? One, two, three, all over this place right now, begin to say, I forgive. Who, whatever their name is, say it out loud. I forgive my father. I forgive my stepfather. 
I forgive my, somebody, I feel that strong in my spirit. I forgive my stepfather that abused me, that neglected me. Yeah, there it is. Come out, devil. Come out, devil. Come out, devil. Demons that entered through divorce. Come out. I forgive. Come on, go a little bit deeper. I forgive my stepmother. I forgive my biological mother. Say it out loud with your own words right now. I forgive my ex-boyfriend, my ex-girlfriend. Some of you, I forgive myself. You need to say, I release and forgive myself. I forgive myself. Come on, whatever it is, begin to say it. The devil's losing ground. Somebody needs to say, I forgive my former pastor. I forgive my former pastor. Some of you were hurt or neglected or abused by pastors. Yeah, come on, the devil hates what I'm saying. You hear these demons manifesting? Some of you need to say, I forgive my former pastor. I forgive the bully at school, the person that terrorized me, the person that called me names in elementary school as a child. I forgive them. As you say their name, you're breaking covenant. Loose her now. Every demon connected to unforgiveness, come out of her right now. Out. Every demonic spirit, out of her now. Go. Go. Out now. She has forgiven. You have no legal right. Out now. In the name of Jesus, do not mock me. I bind you now in the name of Jesus. You spirit of lust and perversion, I break your curse. I sever every ungodly soul tie through fornication. Now, go out. There it is, from the root, out. Lust of the eyes, go out. Your curse is broken. She's a daughter of the king bought by the blood of the lamb get up and out of her now come on prayer team lay your hand on her head there it is come on deliverance is breaking out devil can be on my family this is an eviction notice to the enemy say chain breakers in the room and there's no telling what he's gonna do the devil cannot be on my family. This is an eviction notice to the enemy. Oh, the chain with us in the room. And there's no telling you what he's gonna. Everybody say, the devil cannot be on my family. This is an eviction notice to the enemy. Oh, the chain with us in the room.
for the enemy. This is an addiction for the enemy of lust. Leave now in the name of Jesus. This is an addiction for the enemy of addiction. Leave now in the name of Jesus. This is an addiction of the marriage. Leave now in the name of Jesus. Leave in the name of Jesus. Leave in the name of Jesus. Leave in the name of Jesus. Leave. for the enemy. Chain breakers in a room. This is an addiction for every enemy. Every enemy of your soul. Every enemy of your mind. Every enemy in your mind. It has to go. It has to go.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By his stripes. By his stripes. Chronic illness, be healed right now. Migraine headaches, be healed now. Eyes, be healed right now. Ears open. Ears open. Now, in the name of Jesus, even as there was a prophetic declaration, let it be so right now. Hormones are coming into balance. Cysts and tumors are dissolving in ovaries and wombs right now. Is there somebody receiving a healing for tumors and cysts? I even see cysts in female organs dissolving right now. Come on, that was a prophetic declaration by his stripes. We are healed, healed, healed. Somebody's neck is being healed right now. I see at the base of the neck right now. Every spirit of Jezebel, I break your power, command you to loose their neck right now in the name of Jesus. Loose their neck right now. Jezebel, we break your power now. Loose their neck right now. Jesus' name. Come on. Wrists, knees, arthritis, be healed right now. Arthritis, be healed right now. Father, heal, heal. Even in the area, I see somebody like receiving the ability to walk right now. This crowd is so big. Somebody, if you need healing in the area of your legs to walk, Rise up and begin to walk right now. Somebody who has crutches, somebody who came with a cane, begin to walk right now. If somebody's by you, this crowd is so big. If somebody's by you that needs healing, I want you to grab them and walk them around right now. Do it gently. Somebody healing, somebody's about to receive a miracle in their legs right now. This crowd is so big, I want you to do it in order but if somebody has a cane or somebody's believing for healing in their legs, I want you to just come around them and begin to walk them around. By your faith, you've been made whole. Somebody's gonna take their first step and get healed before the second step. Come on, faith arise, faith arise, faith arise, faith arise, faith arise. Come on, somebody's receiving full healing in their legs right now. Somebody's walking. Oh, is she walking? Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. What's the Lord doing? Do you feel the power of God in your body? Came in crutches? When did you feel that you could like that? Just not. What's your name? Jessica. Jessica. Jessica came in crutches. You had a car accident three years ago? No, I just said on the microphone somebody's gonna receive a healing as they're walking and she walked without any assistance all the way to me. Hold on, hold on, hold your praise for a moment. And I said, when did you feel the healing? And she said, halfway through the walk, I felt the healing and she walked the rest of the way without any assistance. Come on everybody, let's lift up a shout. Father, I release your anointing right now. From the top of her head to the soles of her feet. This car accident was not for the destruction of your life, but the Lord says that I am using it for my glory now. What the enemy meant for your harm, I'm turning it around for your good. 
and you will be a testament of my power, says the Lord. Complete and total healing right now. Wow, the power of God's all through your body right now. Whew. Wow. Shh. Yeah, let her down gently. I mean, I just watched her walk. Are you receiving a miracle too? Come on, who else? Somebody. You just got healed? <laughs> What's your name? Antoinette, you're so beautiful. Listen, listen, I, can I tell your story? She said, go on then. <laughs> Antoinette said, I've had arthritis in my knee for years, for years. Look at you, you getting ready to run? Whoa! <laughs> Hallelujah! She said, when you said start to walk, I started to walk, then I was healed. See, there's something about the spiritual realm that I'm teaching you right now. Everybody says, oh, God will heal me, then I get up. No, the Jesus of Nazareth said, pick up your mat and walk, walk. You take the first step by faith and take the next step into your healing. I will walk by faith and the just shall walk by faith. There was a strong impartation from you. You weren't just, see, there was something that happened, a circuitry. Because apostolically, you had an activation between Jenny and I. And when you started like leaning into her, and I saw what you were doing because you're so good about raising up. Do we got any core group members here? Okay, that's not enough. After tonight, y'all gonna have to sign up for the core, okay? Men, you too. But what ha you're so good about mentoring and training, and I felt you making a deposit. I couldn't tell what was going on, but then when I grabbed you and brought you to the center and you just stood in that place, it was such a powerful moment. But it was also... Come on. It was also a prophetic sign. Because see, the Lord's, he's putting up like prophetic signs right now. Because there's many women that have been silenced in this nation yes. by male pastors who competed with them, yes. by male pastors who were jealous of their anointing, yes. by male, oh, come on, I'm speaking to something. Yes. But the only competition I have is who can go into a deeper realm of glory, yes. provoke each other to a higher height, yes. and see what happens in an atmosphere like this is you've got Jenny cheering you on and imparting to you. And then you got Apostle Mike saying, take your rightful place. And when you stood in this place, you became a conduit for the glory and the anointing and the power of God. And I want to say that when you begin to release the word of the Lord as a minstrel, a minstrel and you begin to declare, what happened was there was a joining together because this unity provokes the hand of God. And so I want you to see this. So arthritis was healed three-year car accident healed are these healings huh you were healed <laughs> come on we're having fun now you got healed I'm coming back to you yeah yeah <laughs> Okay, let me tell you what just happened. When I started praying and commanding Ahab and Jezebel to release the neck, I've been doing deliverance since the late 90s. And one of the hallmarks, one of the key markers of the spirit of Jezebel and Ahab is the base of the neck. It's a very common phenomenon. And so this woman said, for six months, I've had chronic pain all down the side of my neck and into your spine. And into the spine, she said, as soon as I commanded Ahab and Jezebel to loose the neck, the pain is completely and totally gone. Okay, what happened? What happened? You had a stroke, and then what happened? I said, stand up and walk, and you just got up. Did you come in a wheelchair?
Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. There is a God in London. There is a God in England. His name is Jesus. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, Yeshua HaMashiach. Somebody shout his name. Right now, Lord, finish the work. Finish the work. The glory of the Lord all over you right now for complete and total restoration and healing. The wheelchair is not the final step, but it's the first step. But the Lord says, I will finish. I will finish. Power of God is entering every cell of your body right now. Shoo. Come on, let her go. Yeah, yeah. Gently, 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 gently. Just let her bask in the presence. Let her bask in the presence. And they will say, do you remember when she had a stroke? And they will say, do you remember when she used a wheelchair? And they will say, do you remember when she was healed? And as a Lazarus, you will be a sign, a sign to your family as a Lazarus is a sign of resurrection power. Open up a well. I dare somebody to give him unadulterated worship right now. The healer is in the room. Oh, people are coming out of wheelchairs. They're walking without crutches. Marriages are being restored. Demons are coming out. Vapes and cigarettes being destroyed. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Come on, don't wear out on me. Don't tire out on me. God always does something special in overtime. Hey, hey, hey. Sing it.
He's walking up and down through the people in the balcony, in the waiting room, in the hallways. Yes, you. He sees you. He knows you. He can find you on the floor in this room. He can find you outside in the parking lot. He can find you. He can find you watching online. He can find you. Somebody say, yes, you are fine. Let the Lord touch you. Come on, let him minister to you. Wave after wave of your glory. Wave after wave of your glory. Wave after, wave after. Come on, there's another wave of healing. There's another wave of healing right now. There's another wave of healing right now. Come on, some of you are receiving it right now. There's another wave of healing. Wave of your glory coming down.
break out, we say, Spirit, break out. All across the UK, we pray, break our walls down. Spirit, break out. Now, now, now. Spirit break out, yeah. Spirit break out. We need another Pentecost. Break on the wall. Singing fire, fall down. Fire, fall down. Fire, fall down. On us we pray. Fire, fall down. People are being healed from asthma and lungs are opening up. Lungs are opening up. People's lungs are opening right now. If you need healing in your lungs, let me pray right now. I see many hands. See, when, when, when I saw somebody throw these up here for asthma, the Lord showed me this is what I want to do with more. I'm believing for you right now as we pray that your lungs are going to open. Who else? Lungs, 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 lungs. Yeah, lungs. Wow. Who just threw this on stage? Wow, that was you? Let me pray for you. Lungs are about to open. I had a woman with cystic fibrosis. Is that how you say it? No, no, fibromyalgia. 
Is there anybody here with fibromyalgia? Fibromyalgia? Anybody? Fibromyalgia? You? You? Or both of you? Fibromyalgia? Are you related? Okay. Wow, and you're both standing next to each other. Wow, see how the Lord did that? Who else? Fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia. Okay, clear as day, the Lord told me. Now, we're going to pray for lungs. <laughs> Come on, that's all right. Your brother's being delivered? Oh, he has fibromyalgia? Where is he? Not here? Okay, we'll pray for him. You have fibromyalgia. Huh? Okay, I'm going to pray for you. Jesus specializes in conditions that have no cure. No, no, let me correct that. They don't have a cure. Yeah, Jesus. Yes, shoot. See how the demons start acting up every time God's going to do something? So many of you are here to learn from me as well. And see, when it, here's the thing. If you're not in a head-on collision with the devil, it's because you're heading in the same direction. Every single time I hear from the Spirit to do something, the devil starts acting up. Now, we're going to pray for you, for your lungs. And so fibromyalgia, you too. Fibromyalgia? Okay. 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 Fibromyalgia over there as well? Okay. Now listen, I know there's many needs, but I'm focusing on a few things because I'm doing something. Now let me explain something to you. There was a girl... 21 years old that came to me with an oxygen tank fibromyalgia was so bad in her body that her lungs were filled with liquid the doctor said it's impossible there's no cure i pray for this woman on video just on the beach in california that woman received a miraculous healing is no longer on oxygen and fibromyalgia is undetectable in her body now the doctors say undetectable, I say healed. So when I saw people throwing up, what do you guys call these here? Inhalers? When I saw people throwing up inhalers, the Lord's like, I wanna heal lungs. But also fibromyalgia, the, the, Lord, the world will say it can't be healed, but I say it can. And the fact that, you, so you don't know each other and you just happen to be standing next to each other, both of you have fibromyalgia. See, what happens is the Lord is so capable, he's going to heal both of you. And the Lord's going to heal your lungs right now. Who else? Fibromyalgia over there as well. Fibromyalgia? Asthma? Lungs? Lungs? Okay. Praise God. This represents faith. In the book of Genesis... Jehovah breathed, he breathed, pneuma, the breath of life. When the Holy Spirit showed up in Acts 2, the wind of God showed up, the breath of God again. Lift your hands if you need healing in your lungs. Right now, in the name of Jesus, breath of God, breath of God, enter their lungs enter their lungs I speak complete and total healing over fibromyalgia right now be healed be healed be healed right now be healed in Jesus name I break the curse of fibromyalgia I break the curse of fibromyalgia in Jesus mighty name be healed be healed lungs open lungs be healed every fiber of your being be filled with the virtue of jesus christ Whew. the power of god is so strong where's the other one with fibromyalgia over here oh you you laid hands on her okay good job i feel like it was done that's why i said that i felt a release wow you have a powerful healing gift Come here. God's used you in healing, but he's going to increase it. And I want to give you the mic and just have you pray for people because I just felt like there's an unusual anointing for healing on your life. 
You've seen miracles, but it's about to increase. <sighs> and I want to honor you for facilitating revival. I want to honor you from opening up the doors. Something that you all need to understand is you don't just get to do this in London. There's a favor upon this man's life because of a significant sacrifice that was made by his entire family. And there were years and years and years of sowing and toiling and crying and investing and praying and fasting just to get to nights like this. As the lead pastor of a multi-site national church, I take this moment very seriously because I know the salvation is free, but the oil costs you. And so I just felt led for you to begin to pray for miracles because there's like an unusual anointing for healing because I went to go pray for this person. The Lord said he already did it. Is that all right? Come on, let's honor the man of God. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray. But before I do this, I want to tell you what's going to happen. If you need a healing in your ear tonight, if you're deaf tonight, just give me a wave. If you need a healing in your ear, deaf ears, just show me any deaf ears. I want to see your hands really boldly. Yeah, no, that's right. You show me right now. You sh shame the devil right now. You see, I'm on assignment. Some of you know my testimony. I've lost my hearing recently. I, w I just want to give you a testimony of what took place this morning. Pastor Mike, at the beginning of the service, prophesied to me. Now, here's the thing. I lost hearing in my ear. I lost it about four or five weeks ago. And when he prophesied, he prophesied into the wrong ear. He prophesied into my deaf ear. But I heard every word he prophesied. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Come on, you can do better than that. So here's what I'm going to do right now. You see, if the devil comes for me, I'm coming for the devil. Some of you need to get that fight tonight. I tell you, I speak to every deaf ear right now in the name of Jesus. You open in Jesus' name. Every deaf ear opens tonight in Jesus' name. We break your hold over their lives. We release divine healing in the name of Jesus. I speak to arthritis goes tonight in Jesus' name. Cancer goes tonight in Jesus' name. This is an eviction notice. You get out of this, people. You get out of this church sickness bows the knee right now in the name of Jesus now here's what I want you to do I want you to check yourself right now just check your body if you've got sickness you say well you didn't pray for my sickness Jesus healed you right now check yourself check yourself if the Lord healed you give me a wave over there was that one of the deaf ears you got a healing Come on, anyone else, you got healed. Anyone else healed over at the back? Come on, anyone else? Come on, look at the balcony. The balcony took it by faith. Your, your knee just got healed as well. Come on, come on, give God some praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Give God some praise. Ah, now I know you're hot and I know you're tired but here's the thing sometimes you need to give him praise before your miracle takes place you need to praise like it's already done can someone give him some praise tonight give him some no come on come on come on come on in this house give him praise like it's done give him praise like it's done hey hallelujah laughing now devil we are who's laughing now devil <laughs> so here's my favorite way to end a night like this 
My favorite way to end a night like this is impartation. Because you've been delivered from demons. You've been healed from sicknesses and disease. But see, you're not just being healed and delivered to be put up on a shelf to look all pretty. Now that I'm delivered. But he actually delivered you. Mary Magdalene had seven demons. But upon the resurrection, the angel said, now go and tell that he's resurrected. And so you'll come and demonize, you'll leave an evangelist. Come on, so y'all thought that there were just a few demon slayers. I see almost a thousand demon slayers in front of me right now. <laughs> the streets of London will not be safe. The streets of London will never be the same. When you go back into your work, they're going to say something's different about you. Matter of fact, you might as well go into work tomorrow and say, I need to reintroduce myself. And they're going to say, what do you mean reintroduce yourself? I know you. You're going to say, you don't know me. I say, what are you talking about? It's a new me. I'm new in Christ. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have been new. It's a new me. Is there somebody stepping into their identity in Christ right now? Somebody say, you don't know me. You got to come into work tomorrow and you got to say, you don't know me. New me, new bank account. <laughs> new me, new bank account. Oh, Pastor Mike, that's prosperity gospel. No, I'm not a reservoir. I'm a river, and funds are going to flow through me for the nations. And I see some Josephs rising up to distribute seed in a time of need. I see you establishing a Goshen for you and your family. I see you owning and not renting. I see dominion. We will be the lender and not the borrower. We will be the head and not the tail. Jesus didn't come to break the law. He came to fulfill it. I'm the seed of Abraham. Break that poverty spirit off of you. You don't know me. New me, new sexuality. Oh, somebody felt that. New me, new sexuality. Get out of here with that LGBTQ plus IA. J E S U S F R E E D O M. New me, new sexuality. There's some single people who got ready for the covenant of marriage tonight. You don't know me. New me, new anointing. Some people are running off of anointings from 2012. 2020 anointings. New you, new anointing. Come on, impartation is in this place. Some of you are about to go home and dream dreams. Insomnia. I break the power of every spirit of insomnia that's trying to rob you of prophetic dreams. I break the power of insomnia right now in the name of Jesus, and I speak, prophets arise, dream dreams tonight. Discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits. Prophecy. Healing. Diverse tongues. Paul said, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. I'm going to wake up speaking in tongues. I'm going to go to bed speaking in tongues. I'm going to speak in tongues walking down the street. I'm going to begin to edify and build up my spirit, man. I break the spirit of religion and tradition. I break that spirit of Catholicism from the Vatican. I break the power of the Pope off of you. 
false impartation through religion. I break every messianic curse off of you right now in the name of Jesus. All false religion be broken. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Impartation. Now on the count of three, I'm going to release it. You know, Philip, the apostle, showed up and he said, have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire? And they said, we've only received the baptism of John. We don't even know the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We never even heard of it. There's some of you that have never even heard of it. But it says, now listen, John the Baptist, he said, there's one coming greater than I, who's Jesus, Yeshua, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and... When we say fire, we're, we're not saying passion. We're not saying emotionalism. We're saying God sends a response to sacrifice. I am a living sacrifice, and as my life is on the altar before the Lord, He responds with fire. God, not my will, Thy will. Not my way, Your way. That was a word for London. Because everybody in this, wor in this community, in these neighborhoods, is unapologetic about their faith. They're unapologetic about their lifestyle. And it's time for you to leave this place and say, this is who I am. This is who I am. Because I know the I am, I know who I am. I'm, I'm washed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed. I've been saved and delivered. I am a child of the King. I know who I am. Some of you need to go home. And you know, the Bible says wherever you put your feet, he'll give it to you. And I see somebody walking in their home, walking the floor saying, I take dominion and authority over this home. I anoint the doorpost. I'm not going to let the devil have my children. For those of you who said, pray for my spouse, you're going to go back home. And I dare you to put some anointing oil up on his pillow. And I dare you to go in the private place of your prayer and begin to declare, Lord, do what only you can do. Don't give up. Don't give up. God is going to, see, you're not going to fight it by fighting them. You're not going to fight it by fighting them, but you're going to unapologetically say, this is who I am. One last thing before I pray for impartation. Understand that at first you look like a fool, but later on you look like a genius. And there are people who will tell you all the reasons you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't be a believer and you're crazy. But let me tell you, they're going to get a diagnosis for which there is no cure. They're going to reach the end of themselves and then they're going to call you and they're going to say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. They're going to go out there and sleep around and party and keep using and then they're going to call you one day and they're going to say, I'm ready. But that moment's not going to happen if you keep compromising. So you walk this narrow path. Leave this place and walk this narrow path. And when you walk that path, I'm telling you, just like Joseph, his brothers came back. And Joseph said, this thing that you meant for my evil, the Lord turned it around for my good. Vindication is coming. Vindication is coming. 
but you must not compromise. Hear me. Whenever you hear the sound of Babylon bowing before Nebuchadnezzar's idol, do not bow. Do not bow. Because when you hear that sound, it's so enticing. Do not bow. The Lord has freed you. The Lord has cleaned you. And now he's about to deposit something in you. Let me tell you a secret. I was raised by a single mother in poverty in a trailer park. My dad died prematurely of a genetic brain disease. He went to prison for murder. My mom got married multiple times. I had abusive stepdads that physically and verbally abused me. I am the least likely, extremely introverted. But I prayed one prayer when I was 15 years old after reading the Bible three times all the way through. I got to Acts chapter two and I saw what God did with Peter. And I sat on the edge of my bed and I said, Lord, if you can do it with a fool like Peter, baptize me with your Holy Spirit. And I was instantly filled with this Holy Spirit. I started speaking in tongues. Two weeks later, I was coming out of my church where my mom forced me to go every Sunday. And a woman walked across the street that I never saw in my life. She pointed her finger towards me and she, her hand started shaking. And she said, I had a dream about you. I've never seen you before in person, but I saw you in my dream. You preached my church and revival broke out. Several weeks later, I accepted that assignment, and at 15 years old with no seminary degree, wearing a borrowed suit, because I didn't even own a suit, I preached that small church in South Chicago, and revival broke out. At the end of that service, that woman brought her daughter to me, and she said, now it's time to fulfill the last part of my dream. Her daughter was born with a decrepit hand. She said, pray for my daughter. I didn't even know what I was doing. I had only received the baptism of the Holy Spirit weeks before that. I laid my hand at 15 years old on that daughter's head and I said, be healed. And her hand stretched forth and was healed. Now wait, people didn't start shouting. They started screaming in fear. The holiness of God rushed into that place. I'll never forget it. It wasn't, wow, look at God. It was like the fear of God. It was so tangible. And that's what started my ministry. It wasn't a man seeing a gift in me. It was some little Hispanic woman in South Chicago that I don't even know where she's at now. And I hope if she's still alive, we're reunited because her yes became my yes. And my yes became thousands of other yeses. And October 24th in America, across almost every theater, there's gonna be a movie about this and Jenny Weaver's in the movie and Steven's on the poster and in the movie too called the domino revival because when you push a domino down it hits another domino that hits another domino that hits another domino and see it might not be in theaters here maybe pastor will show it on the screen or something but let me tell you your yes in this moment to be baptized in the holy spirit and fire will change your family line forever it will change your family line forever okay are you ready? Okay, just lift your hands. This is the universal sign of surrender. Look at all these beautiful hands. Every race, every age, people of every language. Many of you, your mother never did this, but you're doing this. Your father never did this, but you're doing this. It changes with you right now in this moment. And on the count of three, I'm going to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. And I'm going to pray for an impartation of the gifts of the Spirit. And then you're going to be filled and you're going to receive a deposit. And he takes wooden and clay vessels and turns them into golden vessels of honor for his usage. He takes the common and makes it uncommon. In moments just like this. One, two, now. Holy Spirit, fill, 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 fill. Now, be filled, be filled, be filled. Fill, 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 
Come on, speak it out. Come on, speak it out unapologetically and boldly. Be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire.
on, y'all. Come on, y'all. The show rests on the children. It'll rest on the next generation. Oh, oh, oh. You're gonna see it on the children. Go weary, you're gonna 
walk and you will not fail. You're gonna rise up like the eagle. He's renewing all your strength. You're gonna love again, my sister. You're gonna dream again, my brother. I know that others have heard you. I know others have led you astray. But this time, this time, this time, this time, it's gonna be different, it's gonna be better. That should make you happy. It's gonna be different, it's gonna be better, it's gonna be different, it's gonna be better, it's gonna be different, it's gonna be better.
gonna be different. He's gonna be better. He's gonna be different. Don't worry, guys. You're getting your turn next. <laughs> it's gonna be he. Say he. He's gonna be different. He's gonna be better. He's gonna be different. He's gonna be better. He's gonna be different. He's gonna be better. He's gonna be all the men. All the men say she. She's. Lift your hand. It's gonna be different. Prophesy it over your church right now. Your precious leaders. The whole congregation. The whole worship service. The whole prayer team. Over the board, over the elders, over the deacons, over the leaders, over the pastor, over his wife, or over her husband. It's gonna be different. This is not just a song. This is a prophetic declaration. Words have power, and I mean it. It's gonna be different. It's gonna be better. How thankful are you for Jenny? I'm gonna be taking a shower tonight going, I'm gonna smell different. I'm... <laughs> I stink so bad. Woo! I did not smell the aroma of the glory during this service. I was like, woo! I'm gonna smell different. Listen, as we get ready to dismiss, I'm going to hand it back. But I just want to tell you, when, when Jenny was having you declare over and over and over again, declare, declare, and you were like, this is repetitious, that's the point. I remember early on as I began to move in the prophetic, the Lord told me, you say the right thing too few times. And now I repeat myself on purpose. People are like, Pastor Mike, I've heard that sermon. Yes, but you haven't received it yet. So I'm going to keep preaching it. You haven't got a deeper revelation of it yet. It's, so many of you, it's what she was teaching you is how to be a battering ram. And you know, because the, the enemy curses multiple times a day. So we have to pray without ceasing because we are the, the battering ram against those lies. So she was depositing like prophetic declarations in you. Okay, so let me just say this. What you saw here tonight, how many of you who've lived in England for your whole life or a large part of your life were greatly encouraged to see two lines today down the street and around the block and to see people, oh, come on. They said it wasn't possible. They said it wouldn't happen and we just lived it. We just lived it. And so here's what I want you to do. I want you to stay connected. You know, whether it's the core group in Jenny, whether it's the Breakers and V1, whether it's the local church here, wherever you flew in from, wherever you drove in from. But let me just tell you, what God's doing through social media is he is allowing each and every single one of you a digital window into another possibility. And the reason why there were lines down the block is because people have seen the services that I've done Many of you have seen them and you said, oh, we get to do that here. 
but I want to take it a step further. I'm not special. All I did was show you what's possible. And so now I want to see a line next week. I want to see a line next week. Because it's easy to say, oh, it's not about Mike Signorelli, but why is there no line next week? Oh, I'm coming for y'all. Listen, I've been gone for a month and my church has grown. Jesus said it's better that I leave. Most pastors say it's better that I stay. Because it's not about me. And so next week, wherever you call church home, and if you don't have one, this might be it. I want to see lines. Put a demand on God. Grab your friends. Call them. Revival is messy, and it's hot, and it's sticky, and, it's all, and there's vomit on the floor, and there's pills and drugs getting thrown everywhere, and there's kids singing, and there's a guy who got free from Coke who started singing. What an amazing service. But what I want to deposit in you, and I'm going to have the pastor come, is you understand that you have the ability to provoke a holy jealousy from the nations. And my prayer for the UK, as I get ready to hand this back over, is that all of you in these streets and in your churches begin to take this that was deposited in you and you begin to move with such power and might and wisdom and knowledge and revelation and you begin to function in the gifts of the Spirit to such a degree that the footage online begins to provoke the nations. You know, because the, it's possible for this church to become a destination location. I remember when I planted my church in New York City with 18 people. I remember saying they will fly out and they will drive out and they will take buses and subways to come to our church because we will be a revival destination. And I said it with 18 and then we launched three campuses in three years and now we launched it all across the country and people drive out and fly out and take buses. Some of you here, I'm seeing your face. I just saw you in New York City. Come on. All right. Praise God. Yeah, I'm looking, many of you guys are waving. That was me. So you didn't know, I said it when they were 18. So what I want you to begin to do is I want you to have faith that the nations will be provoked to a holy jealousy for England. Because what the mantle for England is fully word, fully spirit. There's a mantle of deep theology and doctrine, sound doctrine. And there's a mantle for fully spirit and Pentecostal fire. And it's here in this nation. And it's time to step fully into it. So let me pray for you one more time, and I'm going to hand it back. Heavenly Father, I thank you for what you did today. For every single person who responded to an email, to a text, that responded to social media, that by the Holy Spirit saw something can happen if I join my faith. To every person who drove out, I know there's people that spent their last bit of money to get here and don't even know how they're getting home. I know it because I've heard the stories and you've already DM'd me, some of you. Lord, that I pray that there would be a supernatural release of your favor and your blessing upon them. And God, that this will not just be another hype emotional experience, but this will be a sustained movement a sustained revival and that this thing if the Lord tarries will just ripple through years not just weeks and months father I thank you for the saving of many in Jesus name amen come on man of God can we honor pastor Mike Signorelli Papa Six come on I think you can do better than that can you show him some love Who wants him to come back to the UK? Can we also honor Jenny and Stephen Weaver? I feel like we've got Revival family right now. Do you feel that? You know, I've, I think he was prophesying when he said he's going to get a flat in London. I was like, I call that flat in in Jesus' name. But I want to tell you this, and I want to tell you, Jenny and Stephen, the same thing. 
You always have a home in England. You always have a place. Our house is your house. Come on, will you show them some love one more time? Love you. And can we give Jesus a bigger shout of praise tonight? Come on, honor Jesus in this house. Hallelujah. We're going to do three things and then we're finished for the night. Okay, first thing's this. I know there's people that have come for the first time here. I want to encourage you, connect with us. Go on to our website, elonwimbledon.co.uk. Put your name in the mailing list, your email address. You'll find out about all of our events coming up. We've got a conference coming up in March. We just had Jenny Weaver here for our ladies' conference. Mike today. And we're in the middle of a fire-up festival, right? now so you want to get along we've got more events over summer that you can be a part of the second thing I want to tell you is we're going to baptize anyone who wants to be baptized next Sunday so if you want to get baptized get back to this place the first command of scripture is be baptized full immersion there's no questions you come to this place you bring a change of clothes we're going to get you in the water we're going to get you out the water again amen Okay, final thing. We want you to sow into revival tonight. And so you're going to see the bank details come up on the screen. We're going to leave them there for you. And then also on your way out, there's going to be some buckets you can give. If you want to give by cash, can we get those bank details on? The bank will leave those on the screen. If you can sow into revival. We want to bless Mike. We want to bless Jenny. And so I need you to sow tonight. Sow into them. If you think we're going to get rich on this offering, then you are not seeing the Spirit. We are sowing into revival. We want to see a move of God in the UK. So you're giving into revival tonight. So so you can take a picture and you can do it on your train or on your ride home. But please give to the kingdom work tonight. This is the best atmosphere to sow into. You know, it's an atmosphere of revival. You sow into the glory, and from the glory you're going to reap tonight. So, Father, we just pray right now. Bless this offering in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want you to reach out a hand. Everyone reach out a hand across the room. And may the outrageous love of the Father, the extravagant grace of Master Jesus, and the intimate fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Your best days are ahead of you. God's not finished with you yet. You're the head, not the tail. Bless when you come in. Bless when you go out. This is your time for revival. Revival starts in you. Spread it to the nation. Spread it to wherever you go in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Yeah. We'll see you next time. Thank you.